This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. These are uh, my disclosures. Um, one of the uh, reasons I love doing this work is because it just takes a simple histological evaluation to know that there is much more than blockages in vessels that we are dealing with in uh, patients with PAD. Um, there is the end organ, the leg itself, that suffers in the process. And I would like to share with you some of the histology that we see in these patients. This is normal muscle. You see the, the muscle cell, the myofiber, is polygonal. And a bunch of cells are arranged together in myofascicles that are surrounded by this very thin perimesium. And here we have um, patients um, with claudication um, that present with mild, moderate, and severe myopathic changes. And basically what that means is there is a combination initially of myofiber atrophy, and you see small fibers and moderate size fibers and big fibers. You can also see some fibers with severe changes and inflammatory cells trying to take them out of uh, the muscle. And then what happens is this atrophy becomes worse and gets the atrophic muscle uh, gets replaced by some scar tissue and some fat cells. And then at the final stages, the entire muscle is replaced by scar and fat. I like this slide very much because vascular surgeons, we, and myself included, we we, th we think that if you do a, an appropriate bypass and bring a healthy blood flow to a limb, you can take a patient that has significant uh, limitation and turn the patient into a normal walking person. But I think anybody that sees something like that can tell that no matter how big um, a, a bypass you do on this patient, this leg will not be normal again. So um, our, um, our laboratory, the work in our laboratory uh, is showing that at the biochemical level, there are two important characteristics of this myopathy. There is mitochondrial dysfunction, and there is oxidative damage. And uh, I will not bore you too much, but um, our group and others have shown that the main problem in the mitochondria electron transport chain is defects in complexes one, three, and four. And the problems with that uh, are two. Number one, ATP production through oxidative phosphorylation goes down. So if you think about it, our patients, not only they don't get enough oxygen and nutrients to their muscle, but the little that gets there cannot be translated to ATP because their mitochondria are defective. The second problem is these defective electron transport chain complexes are leaking electrons, and because of that, oxygen radicals are produced, and um, actually the most consistent finding in these legs is oxidative damage. You can see PAD muscle here uh, labeled for a, a marker of oxidative damage is significant more labeling than the control. And uh, oxidative damage, uh, here we have two markers of damage, is significantly increased in PAD specimens in red compared to controls. And actually, uh, a very impressive thing is that those myofibers that have high oxidative damage also demonstrate a decrease in their cross-sectional area compared to the controls. 
So um, another very impressive finding, and we, we just uh, uh, published this, is that damage accumulates as disease progresses. So damage levels at the, in control patients, uh, we have a little higher damage in clodicants, a little higher in patients with breast pain, and the highest in people with tissue loss. So if you think about it, as ischemia persists, damage accumulates in these limbs. Progressively, more and more damage affects every structure in the ischemic extremity, including muscles that we are studying, but also skin, nerves, subcutaneous tissues, sweat glands, uh, hair follicles, and eventually, as damage accumulates, we have the manifestations of claudication and tissue loss gangrene. Um, so mitochondrial dysfunction and the associated oxidative damage are central pathophysiologic features of this myopathy. Um, now, one question our group has attempted to answer is, how does this myopathy respond to revascularization? And I'm going to share with you an interim analysis of a study of 50 patients that our group uh, has attempted to put together. So uh, this is an analysis of the first 35 people. And here what you, and, and these patients had evaluation of their muscle and uh, function and quality of life at baseline and then six months after bypass operation. And here at, in the x-axis is uh, the um, uh, mitochondrial respiration at baseline and this is after six months. And this line is the line of equivalence. So if you're on this line, you have not changed. If you're above, it has increased. Below, it has decreased. And you can see that the mitochondrial function has improved about 23% in a statistically significant fashion. But in every uh, graph I, I'm going to show you, please notice that there is a bunch of people that really have not changed after bypass. Um, here is the same graph, but for oxidative damage, and you can see that after bypass, 14.5% decrease in levels of oxidative damage. And only one more graph, this is the walking distances, uh, maximum walking distance uh, specifically, but similar findings we have for six-minute walk test and initial claudication distance. Um, there is a 165% increase in walking distance. But again, what I want to share with you is that they went from a baseline of 200 meters to a 570 meters after the operation. This is hardly normal. Plus, there was about 30% of patients after a successful bypass with significant improvement of ABI that had no substantial improvement in their walking distances. And these patients, I, I'm not showing the quality of life data, all of them came back and stated that they had substantial improvement in their ability to walk. So um, revascularization improves the mitochondrial dysfunction, oxidative damage of PED limbs in association with improvements of limb function and quality of life. The question is, is this just an association between uh, mitochondria, oxidative stress and, uh, in the leg and functional improvements of PAD patients? Or can, can we do other therapies that improve mitochondria and oxidant state and in result have improvement in the function? And as you know, um, there are a lot of therapies that target the mitochondria dysfunction elevated oxidant state and therapies could be exercise, pharmacotherapy, and stem cell therapy. Uh, in particular, uh, there are a lot of medications that our group and others are uh, considering, medications that stimulate mitochondrial bioenergetics, uh, medications that optimize energy metabolism in defective mitochondria, medications that reduce reactive oxygen species generation or remove excess reactive oxygen species, and then medications with combined actions where they improve mitochondria, they have anti-inflammatory action, direct scavenging actions, induction of antioxidant enzymes, inhibition of oxidase, uh, oxidases, and methylchelation. So 
what our group and a lot uh, of people are working currently is we have defined what that this is what happens and look this is our CT scan look at these end stage myopathic changes this is subcutaneous fat and this is muscle not really a big difference so the question is can we really reverse this process uh, thank you